All right, pups, we are going to run through things that car dealers, salespeople, sales managers, finance managers ask you when you're going through the process of buying a car. And then we are going to demonstrate the way that you should respond. Mm -hmm. The reason we're doing this is because if I'm not mistaken, when you were a sales manager, you did a lot of training with your salespeople. Here are what you guys called them word tracks, right? Uh, yeah, that's what they're called. That's what they're yeah. called. Here yeah. are the word tracks. Here are the things we say so that we yeah. can put the customer in a position where we can either get them to close, you know, move them along in the deal. This is when, when customers hear those word tracks. Here are your word tracks yes. that you wrote for us. And Kimberly Klein, the F&I goddess herself back at CarEdge.com, she wrote on these cheat sheets. You ready to go? Yep. I will mention these cheat sheets are 100% free. Just go to CarEdge.com. Click the link down below to get access to them. Here we go. Yes. I'm the salesperson. I, the salesman. I believe so, yeah. All right, customer. Yes. Uh, do you have a monthly budget in mind? Um, you know, I... I just have a total out the door price in mind. So if it's okay with you, Zach, I would just like to concentrate on what the out the door numbers are going to be. And let's run that back now if I'm a normal customer who's not educated about yeah. what they're going into. Hey, Ray, do you have a monthly budget in mind? Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Of course I do. And what is it? Oh, uh, well, you know, I, I don't want my payment to be more than, I don't know, say $700 a month. Boom. What happens when, as a customer, I say I don't want my payment to be more than $700 a month? Uh, well, they know how they can approach the deal. Um, they're just going to talk to you about monthly payments the whole time. Uh, and a good salesperson is going to say to you uh, $700 up to, and you're going to go, I don't know, as long as it's not more than $775. Um, so... For every twenty five dollars you push yourself, that's like another thousand dollars. You're just you're just sinking yourself into a oh, hole. Yeah. Versus, yeah. versus asking the question or saying back to them, "Well, I'm I'm really just focused on the out the door price." Yes. All right, let's go to the next one, Deb. Okay. I'm the salesperson. You're the customer. Yeah. Well, well, Ray, how much cash do you plan on putting down? You know, I really haven't decided that yet, and I won't until we establish what an acceptable out the door number is. So, it. Zach, I'm telling you, we, we really have to work on the out-the-door number, and then we can start worrying about the other aspects. All right, and let's pause here. Why, as a salesperson, do I care about how much cash down is going if, especially if, I just got the customer to tell me they want their monthly payment to be no more than $775? Yeah, I mean, between cash normally equates to profit. The more cash you have in a deal, the, the greater the likelihood that the profit's going to be bigger because if ultimately you end up having, to, as a salesperson or a sales manager, have to work on a payment, well, typically it means you have to discount the car in order to get to that payment. The other way to discount, the other way to, to lower the monthly payment is to get cash from the customer and you don't really have to discount the car as much. So the dealership's always going to want you to focus on what the monthly payment is. You're always going to want to focus on what the out the door number is. And you want to establish that before you start getting into any type of conversation about your monthly payment. Save 20% on everything car edge. Data, coach, reports, consult. Use promo code 20 or save $100 on the vehicle service contract extended or tech warranty. They're automatically applied at checkout now through September 4th only. So let's run it back. So you, as the customer, you told me you want your monthly payment to be no more than $775. And then I come in here and I say, oh, right, $775. I think we might be able to make that work. I, yeah. I understand. But but how much cash were you planning on putting down? You know, the bank requires that that our customers put down a lot of money to really show that they're they're invested in the vehicle. What were you thinking? Um, well, I'm going to teach you a better way to say that. The banks today typically are looking for 20 to 25% cash down. On this $50,000 car you're looking at, that would normally be about oh, somewhere around $10,000. Were you planning on putting that or more down? That way, the bank's asking for the money. You're not. As a customer, then you're going to say, well, the bank wants $10,000. Well, maybe I can put $7,500 down. And now they know you want a payment less than $775. You're willing to put $7,500 down. We have absolutely no clue what the price of the car is. Absolutely no clue. But the dealer has all the information they need to make sure that they can get you in a $775 payment. Yes. And you're happy. Yes. Because you're a payment buyer. Again, these are the ways to respond to these things. Don't just answer in the typical way. One more on the sales yes. side, Dad, and then we'll move on. What about, uh, okay, so I'm, I'm the salesperson. Yes. Ray, what are you going to do with that car you drove here? You, you planning on trading that in? You know, I, I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, what I'd really like to concentrate on, Zach, is that out-the-door number. Once we established an out-the-door number, then we can have a conversation about whether I'm going to trade a vehicle or whether I'm just going to sell the vehicle privately to someone else. 
All right, exactly. Two separate transactions. We just did another video talking about how you have to treat these as two separate transactions. Another plug for our incredible trade-in guide that you have to go check out. Yes. Okay, so those were three examples from the sales side, getting the, the asking price, the out-the-door price, focusing on the trade-in a little mm -hmm. bit. Now, Dad, let's say we've gotten past that. Now I'm talking to the finance manager. You're gonna hear some things like this. I'm the finance manager, you're the customer. Yes. Well, Ray, I assume you've given some thought to, to your monthly payment. I know you work the deal with, with Joe out on the showroom and, mm -hmm. and everything makes sense. Uh, do you have a sense for, for you know where you want that loan term to be and, and what, what you're comfortable with? Uh, I, I, I have indeed given it quite a bit of thought and I've gotten a pre-approval from my credit union down the street. So I, I, I really have a complete understanding as to a, where my payment should fall, and B, what my term should be in order to keep my payment where I'd like to have it. That is a perfect way to respond. You're already, you're taking control with saying, hey, I actually, I'm informed. I know what I got approved for versus, well, I haven't really thought about the loan term. Like, actually, could you make my payment go even lower? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure, I could make your payment go even lower, but maybe it's going to extend the term. All right, so then maybe as a finance manager, I say something like this. So, so Ray, would you, you know, that, that's good. That's yeah. great. I'm, I'm glad you have your pre-approval. Pre-approval, would you, would you consider financing through us? Um, the, the possibility exists, but I would need you to, uh, to get me a better rate than what I can get at my current credit union. Um, and if you can do that and save me enough on the rate and the payment comes down commensurately, then I would consider it. So if I beat your rate, you'll finance with us? Boom. Like that's a good one-two punch instead of, like I was saying before, you just walk in there. You don't really have a sense for what your credit worthiness is. And next thing you know, your payment may have gone down from seven seventy five dollars to... Six, seven, six seventy five, or maybe seven seventy, or seven seventy, yeah. <laughs> but it's only because the term has yes. been stretched out. All right, what about to add some of those other products like extended warranties and things like that? The finance manager will typically pull out a menu. We yes. have all sorts of examples of of this. Kimberly has done an incredible job. We've got fake menus, faux menus. So, Dad, what what do you do when when the finance manager brings out that menu and puts it in front of you, either digitally or physically, and it shows all your various options for how you can protect this brand new car? It's only going to increase your monthly payment ten dollars a month, fifty dollars a month, whatever the heck it is. How do you respond to that? Um, can I see a breakdown of what each one of these items is costing me? I, I'm not as as concerned about the monthly payment per se, as I am at what the actual charge for this item is. Yeah. And you need to also ask for things like your base payment. So yes. remind me, hey, what was that actual payment that I was at without any of these products added on? And then please, everyone recognize that when you add those products on, you finance them, you are financing them, you're paying interest. Oh, absolutely. Them. Yes. That's why it's good to ask for what's the actual price, because yes. then it helps you rationalize what whether you're or not your money on. Yeah. And it helps you rationalize whether or not it's... It, the price is equal to or greater than its value. Exactly. Yeah. All right. One final kind of, uh, uh, let's say, you know, what to say, but more ask for prepayment penalties on this finance loan that you're getting through the dealership or on this finance and the loan that you're getting through the dealership. Ask if there are prepayment penalties, because that's one you don't want to be caught. You know, you end up paying the loan off early. You go to refinance it. That's one thing. Don't expect the finance manager to bring that up. No, they'll never bring it up. But ask if there is a prepayment penalty. And in most cases, there's not. So that that would lead you to believe that if you if, if you do the deal through the finance department there and you can actually get a better rate somewhere else you can just automatically go out and refinance it and pay off the existing loan all right so there you go the cheat sheets are back at caredge.com they are 100 percent free and these are sayings that people get hit with all the time the word tracks the sales people the sales managers the f and i managers use and here are ways that you can respond back to them so please when you go into the dealership print one of these out take it with you absolutely thank you pops thank you handsome